it's a pleasure to have your company, and by comparison, thank you for tuning in, those who have just joined. This will be our final vlog, not permanently, just under the Having a Cuppa Wake Up and Smell the Coffee banner. Next month, we are excited to launch the Apex Predator podcast and vlog, which will be taking the place of this very program. And we're going to be taking a whole new turn on this journey together. We'll be discovering things from a literal standpoint and even a philosophical standpoint. Now, bearing well in mind, I decided to make my target market predominantly men, which is not a sexist thing nor a thing of misogyny. It's just a pure and blatant fact. We as men need a kick in the pants. And as a result, there's going to be things said which might feel uncomfortable or unwelcome. But I'm not in the popularity game. I am in the people game. So if as well, you should feel the need if you're the, of the opposite gender to join in. It's going to be a pleasure to have you all are welcome still. I should tell you, making this decision wasn't really a very easy one for me. But it was something that had been niggling in the back of my mind for quite some time. And now I'm just taking that leap off the cliff without the parachute. And I've been doing a lot of study myself the last while, consulting a lot of books in my spare time, and growing with the tide has been refreshing, if not uncomfortable. And need I say to those who are a lot more literate than I on the subject, you know as equally as well as I do now that growth comes when you're outside of your comfort zone. We've been doing very, very well with CNMSP. As such, I'm busy finishing off a contract overseas for voiceover work. And the last week or so, I've been in negotiations and in pre-production of another production that I'm busy doing on behalf of someone who also wants to make their contribution in the communications realm and very, very excited about that. So if you pay attention to my social media, which I'll give at the end of the episode, it will be made due in good time. What I want to talk about today is also something that is extremely unpopular, but whether or not you like it or not, you're going to hear it, and I can bet you Monopoly money you're still going to be tuned in because just as well as I, you've had that niggling feeling in the back of your mind too. And that is the principle about forgiveness. I have seen numerous people, who I will name nameless because I know some of them personally, who have said the following, it is not necessary to forgive. And I say with all the love in my heart, it's a load of claptrap. I said this as well before on a previous vlog, that if you do not forgive, if you do not proactively move on by letting your past behind you, then it's your fault that your relationships, that your business dealings, and that your entire life professionally and personally is going down the tubes, not proverbially, but literally. And why? It has a psychological effect. Because whether you want to know it or not, even unconsciously, unforgiveness festers and festers and festers. And sycophantically, it absolutely buggers up your mood six ways to Sunday, and that's where the Jenga Tower literally starts to disintegrate. And this is applicable to men and women alike. It's a fact. Sorry, not sorry. That is just the fact of it all. But now you might be thinking to yourself, fine, I forgive, whatever the circumstance may be. Do I move on? It's a long and arduous process. And I've been schooled in that tradition rather fluently. Forgiveness, first and foremost, starts not just with the opposite person who may have done you wrong or the circumstances that have done you wrong, but you who did you wrong. If there's anyone else that needs to be forgiven, first and foremost, it's yourself. Whether you want to know it or not, we are not perfect. The chase of perfection will always be at play and you only reach perfection when the day comes that you can lay your head to rest and you can effectively and proactively look back on your life and say, you know what, I left it all on the floor. That's where forgiveness should start, forgiving yourself. How do you forgive yourself apart and beyond from just saying, I forgive myself? 
you have to start making some radical changes. But you know what? Let me lessen the blow. How did I go about forgiving myself? Well, why did I need to forgive myself? Is the big question that looms. Because at face value, it seems like I might have everything. When the truth is, I'm slowly but surely getting there. I had to forgive myself because of the poisonous relationships that I let myself get involved with. Why? Because unfortunately, whether my fellow countrymen want to hear it or not, we are in a third world country. And the moment that you get something on a professional level that might seem where the grass is greener on the other side, it's the only viable option. But erstwhile, there's unfortunately unsavory forces out there who want to see you go under because it makes themselves feel good. Why? Because they are absolutely little in themselves. First mistake I made. And when the time came that I had been useful enough to the other party, and I was substantially kicked out, landing on my butt on the cement, I became bitter and I became twisted, and not realizing that because of my actions, I was hurting the people who love me the most. Often than not, I would hear the phrase, I am not your enemy, which only would seethen my rage even more. It's a humbling lesson to learn that unconsciously you can affect the people you love the most in a negative way. I say humbling in that you shouldn't chase after it. Not at all. But the moment in realizing it and that there can be improvements made, that is the watershed moment. So I had to make big changes in my life, meaning that I had to sit and retroactively, let me correct myself there, I had to go back in retrospect and I had to highlight the moments, no matter how painful, of the last year or so that had caused me immense upset and disappointment. Don't think for a mere moment that doing an exercise like that is child's play. It's not. That's taking responsibility. It's the stone throw of taking responsibility. You'll remember in the beginning of the year where I said, start to diarize your dreams, your visions, your goals. Same principle. Then, what was the changes that I had to make? Well, I had to lull myself out of the comfort, inverted commas, of bitterness. And I had to put myself in a position that was uncomfortable. I had begun to take up the ho uh, hobby of running. I would normally do it late morning, approaching early midday. So I said, what is the most uncomfortable thing to do? Do it early morning where I could be in bed, sleeping. We're uh, approaching our autumn season here in Southern Africa. So as a result, I would say, do the uncomfortable thing by waking up in the morning. Don't hit the snooze button. Strap on my running shoes. Put on a pair of sweats and hit the trail while it's still dark out. And with that endorphin, endorphins, plural, coursing through my system, immediately the cloud or the fog of resentment, bitterness, and whatsoever would begin to lift. Think about it, and please, you're more than welcome to do your own research into the matter. If you continually fester on resentment and bitterness, not only will it bugger up your relationships, that is the cornerstone of physical ailments like cancer. If you think I'm talking shit, please, I invite you. Go on the internet. Everything now is at our fingertips. Go look it up. Go look it up. I'll bet you, I'll bet you, there's more than 10 articles looming online exactly what is the cause. If you look under mindfulness or if you look under well-being coaching, they will say exactly the same thing like what I'm saying to you now. I'm just cutting out the middleman, and I'm trying to help you. So if you want to call me nasty names, please do so. I'm not going to hear about it, but I know you're going to try and tell me wrong. But why are you going to try and tell me wrong? Because you know that I'm right. You know that I'm right, and you're just putting up a defense to try and deny it yourself. But in due course, it's going to hit you like a kick in the pants. And that's exactly what happened to me. I know what I'm talking about. But enough about that. 
So progressively making those changes physically and intellectually led me to ask forgiveness from my Lord for the bitterness and the hate that I was carrying inside on towards the parties that had did me wrong and led me to lose my radio job, which I loved more than anything else to do. Because the moment that I get behind the microphone, I become a completely different entity entirely myself. When I'm at home, I'm a very staid, quiet, introverted person. I like to do my own thing around the house, which is not a bad thing. I'm still a compassionate ear whenever I need to, and I'm still a proactive participant in my household. But when I'm performing, I'm performing. And any performer in the arts arena will tell you exactly the same thing. Whether they hit the stage to do a comedy show or when a musician gets up on stage and plays their first number, an unspoken energy kicks in. That was the same kind of high that I got when I was still on professional radio. And now that I don't do it anymore, it was a difficult, a very difficult phase to grow out from. But you know what? When I made those changes of forgiveness and realizing that this change was happening for my benefit, and not just only for my benefit, but for the benefit of humanity as a whole, my life has taken on a whole new perspective. <sighs> Guys and girls, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There are lies being sprouted on social media. And I'll play open cards. If you don't want to believe in what it is that I believe, I'm not holding a gun to your head and say, listen, Take what it is that I say as gospel and do it for yourself. If you believe in an energy or an evolution, I don't know what claptrap, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, 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 quotas or, or, or vernacular today is being ousted in opposition to something like a living higher being as am I am a theist, go your bones, please. Go your bones. Do whatever it is that you feel is necessary to bring you to that point of release of bitterness and resentment. Because I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you're going to think I'm lying. And you're going to think I'm judging you. There's a difference between judgment and there's a difference between accountability. The problem is in this life, we as true friends are not holding our own accountable for their actions under the pretenses that we don't want to judge, whilst ultimately we are babying these people to carry on in their route, and then when that person does something stupid and they're no longer on the earth anymore, what's the first thing we say? If only we acted a little sooner. There, I said it. And the problem is I did that. That exact same thing. Someone who was hurting many moons ago, who is no longer here, came to me for help. And the one thing that I said was, is why do you want help from me? You never listened to me anyway. So you know what? Go ahead and bump your head. What happened? New Year's Day 2010. This person in question was murdered by her own father. And her mother, unfortunately, was also a casualty. And had made the headlines that very next week. And I moseyed about after the funeral, feeling sorry for myself that I nearly walked into the path of an oncoming car. And for too long, myself, I blamed everyone around me for the mishappenings in my life. I blamed my father for the dissolution of his marriage to my mother. I blamed my father for my financial troubles. I blamed my father for my alcohol and drug addiction. I blamed my father because I couldn't get anywhere, because the only thing that he ever said to me on my 21st birthday was he came up to me with a weak little hand, shook it, and said, make it work. But never once, never once did I ever say, how did I contribute to the mess? Yes, I wished my dad dead. Yes, there was times that I could have killed him, but I didn't do it. There was times that I should have gone up to him and said, Dad, I am sorry. There was, should have been times where I should have held my own parent accountable in my 20s where I said, Dad, you're busy messing up your life. I'm saying it because I love you. It's time to put on your big boy pants and get some professional help. But no, I kept quiet. Because if you speak in accountability to people who you love the most, you do it out of a sense of love. You don't do it out of a sense of judgment. 
You do it because you care for something and other people bigger than yourself. That's the difference. And if someone says to you, you're judging them, forgive them because they're hurting. Forgive them because they are not where you are. Help them, but don't baby them. Tell them where they are wrong, but show them the way. Don't just tell them the way, show them the way. This is why I'm passionate about what it is that I'm doing. And I'm trying my best to correct the errors that I couldn't get right with the people that I should have helped the most. And I can walk around with that kind of regret for the rest of my life. But you know what? I can't afford that anymore. So, all I can do is use my story to not repeat what it is that I did before. And hear me, guys. Living in bitterness and in resentment will kill you faster than a speeding bullet. But to quote Steve Harvey, there are two kinds of hard that you could follow. You could live the hard of resentment, where you never chase after anything bigger than what you are meant to be, or you can chase after the bigger that you are meant to be and handle that kind of hard. That kind of hard at least comes with options. Quoting his words directly. You can still love a person and you can also tell them where they are wrong. Your intention will dictate your actions. But you can't do that unless you do the deep work within and let go of what is, let go of what was and what could have. And to rectify something and to clarify something I should say, what we were taught at very young is that every action has a consequence. So I implore you, learn the process of forgiveness. Suffer under the pain of discipline of trying to forgive yourself, which is not fun. I know, I speak from experience. <coughs> But if you don't do it now, you will never see the light of day of the greener grass on the other side. And you will never see the light of day of the man or the woman that you are meant to love or meet the face of the beauty that is going to be breathing life from your actions. And I want to get personal here a little bit. I can chase after every material thing that I want to, which is a noble cause, but my heart's desire is to be a husband and a father because I never had that opportunity in my life to experience the love of a dad. But if there has not been a hunger big enough that it keeps me up at night to be a parent, whether it be with a blended family or with Children out of my own loins it makes no damn day's difference for me. In fact, I'm, I'm playing both fields, having one for my loins and having a blended family as well. A lot of families go that route, the modern family, if you will, if you want to give it a turn. And there's absolutely no play-by-play -play book on how to concretely be the model parent or the model husband or the model wife or the model, model father, uh, mother. Sorry for the tongue twister. You can only just show up. Learn those lessons. Carry that lesson with you always. Love yourself, but learn to discipline yourself. Don't murmur 
on what could have been. It's not going to do you any good. It's going to be very, very rude, crude, and hard. And to quote Beatrice Coolian, if there were any such a time to give yourself a checkup from the neck up, now is the fucking time to do it. Because time is running out. Until you are put into your casket. So I implore you, forgive yourself. Forgive others. Move forward progressively. Hold one another accountable. Do it from a place of love. There we are. I can't wait to see you all on the new Apex Predator platform. You're more than welcome to follow me on social media. My handle is at Chris Nell Media. I also have a Facebook page. It's my first name, C-H-R-I-S. My last name is N-E dual L, because if you do it with a single L, it's the French or the Dutch translation. I'm Irish, Dutch Irish, so my spelling is with a dual L. I post there regularly, some of my thoughts, some developments as well. It'll be a pleasure to have your company, and I can't wait to see you in the next episode of the Apex Predator, where we are unleashing the beast. Keep well.